God KD just responded to Spurs before saying the country of Serbia should be proud. What a scumbag move. Okay, scum, okay scumbag, okay, that's too extreme. Right. <laughs> You're right. Our takes don't matter. But, Durant, you're not living in reality. Agendas is, is, is his life. <laughs> he's happy America won, but he's also giving credit to Jokic and Serbia. <laughs> KD! <laughs> now, this, and this is not from his burner account, so... We're gonna go through the entire timing because it's amazing. So I've actually so I've worked hard so to pretty much do tweet by tweet by tweet. So we're gonna go through all the tweets in chronological order to see what what has happened. So how did this all start? So this all began with Serbia, Team USA, Team USA only just beating Serbia, and guys are like, because I told you I didn't watch the game because I was like, bro, I'm not, you've already beaten them twice. They only have Jokic, Durant. LeBron step. Oh, this is too easy. You're gonna de de destroy them. But Serbia made it competitive, and people's shock was Serbia almost won. A country of six million people almost beat a country of three hundred million people, where basketball is their main sport. So they started with this. So from sweet sweet sw sw swiper, Serbia just took the most talented team in the history of the planet to the wire with a medal on the line. Team USA was a sixteen point favorite. The whole country should be proud. Obviously, the whole country of Serbia should be proud. I'm like, and there is nothing wrong with this tweet because what Serbia did was absolutely amazing. And he's right. That there, is, there is not a more talented team. There's not a more talented group of individuals of this sports than that um, team, USA um, individuals. That US team, you, can name, you cannot name it a more talented team. Like, probably the most, the team that's probably more talented is either the Brazil 1970 football team or the Dream Team of 1992. Those are the only other two sports teams I can say are, have more talents from individual to individual. And so there's nothing wrong here. Then Durant replies, where are you from? Because Durant is like, wait a minute, America just won. You're American. Why are you repping Serbia? Shouldn't you be like, oh, America won. Why should you be repping Serbia? This is... I see Durant's point, but Durant, you have to be realistic. For many Americans, they're like, this shouldn't even be a contest. This shouldn't even be a debate. So if you're American... How can you celebrate that? So on one hand, you should be repping America. Like, yeah, we did it. A close game, but we came through. But on the other hand, it's like, hang on. This is our spot that we invented. And we have on that roster some of the greatest players in history on that roster. And a country of six million took us to the wire and made it close. So for some people, they'll be like, okay, America, yeah, we won. But Serbia, damn. Wow. Congrats. So I can see both sides there. But for Durant, he's like, wait a minute, you're, a, you're American. Why are you talking about Sebe being proud rather than saying America should be proud? But we don't go deeper. So let me even increase. So this is the guy who um, tweeted this out. So YouTuber Denver Sports Analysts for Mile High Sports, co-host of Locked on Nuggets. So... He's a Denver Nuggets sports analyst. So obviously, because he's repping Denver Nuggets, obviously he's got um, young Camilla Anthony in the middle there for Denver. He's going to be like, yo, Jokic is my guy. I'm going to rep my, my guy. So Durant's issue is that you've chosen... It's the same thing that happens in football. You've chosen club over country. So you've chosen your allegiance to the Denver Nuggets over the allegiance to America. So Durant is like, no, your allegiance should be, once you now get into the Olympics or FIBA, your allegiance, any of your local allegiances should go away and your allegiance should be to America, the country, rather than your allegiance being to the Denver Nuggets and it's being a guy who is Serb and not even America. So we move on. So another guy tweeted, God KD just responded to Swerper for saying the country of Serbia should be proud. What a scumbag move. 
okay, scum, okay, scumbag, okay, that's too extreme. <laughs> so, well, that's too extreme. There's nothing wrong with Durant's res see, Durant, there's, no, there's, there's nothing wrong. So it's not, Durant would say, oh my gosh, you fake American, you trade so. He just saying, yo, where are you from? As an American, you'd be saying, what's up? So I don't say this is a scumbag move, but this guy, he doubled down. Some people are saying me calling KD a scumbag was too harsh. So I'll rephrase. He's a petty, insecure, little, ignorant bitch. So he doubled down. And, and this is why Durant is amazing. This is why, why we love Durant on Twitter. He, Durant sees all and Durant knows all. So Durant responded. Again, I think this guy has been overborne by that response that Durant made. Um, Will's upset. <laughs> So he saw that. So I think for Durant, he, because you know Durant is very sensitive. So he must be like, oh, okay. And for the Will guy, like, Kevin Durant's response of where are you from? Why are you not repping America? Did he really need this extra from Will? I don't think it did. Um, so this is what guys say. So now he's just tired of American Nuggets fans cheering against Team USA and cheering for Serbia. He has a point. If your country is in a competition against another country, oh, okay, let me give you a good example. Let's say, okay, let's say, let's say I was American. So my team is Orlando Magic. So that's my team, it's Orlando Magic. So let me put, give me a good example. My team is Orlando Magic. My, one of my favorite players that got into basketball was Penny Hardaway. Let's say I was... Okay, for example, it's Alondo Magic and my team. Nigeria are playing America in like a basketball game. And I'm now cheering for Penny Hardaway and America over my country, Nigeria. Yes, Alondo Magic is my team. Penny Hardaway is my favorite player. But when it now comes to country, Surely I should be repping Nigeria rather than repping Penny Hardaway and, and repping America. So that's the whole point. It, it's, so it's like, okay, fine, you're a Nuggets fan, but you're American. So when the Nuggets play whoever, rep the Nuggets. But when America is now playing a team that has a Nuggets player, how are you choosing to rep a team with a Nuggets player over the American team? So, but then Mike says, cheering against Team USA? You mean like all of those Americans who are making fun of Noah Lyles not winning gold in his latest race? Good old double standards. Just admit you hate the facts that Jokic is clearly the best player in the world. Mike does have a bit of an AP points there. The whole Noah Lyles thing is freaking stupid. He said nothing wrong. And do you know what makes it crazy? First, let's say Noah Lyles finished eighth in the 200 meters. Let's say he finished last. His point still stands. What I find so cringe and stupid from NBA Twitter is because Noah Lyles came third, guys are like, oh, what champion of what? What champion of what? Where it's like, are you guys dumb or are you stupid? Choose one. You're either dumb or you're stupid. His point still stands. If you win the NBA championship, you can't call yourself world champions. If you win the baseball world series, you can't call yourself world champions. You have to face against other people in the world. Um, so Mike has a point of like, you okay? You say Americans should get together. Why are Americans now? It's a great point. It is a great point. So, oh, we should all be two together. Why do you have Americans wanting to allow us to lose? They wanted to allow us to, to lose that hundred. And when he won the hundred, you see that they were angry. And once he now came third in the two hundreds, everyone was on Twitter was like, "What happened? What? What happened? What?" So this is a great point that Mike made. That no, you you can't have those double standards. Um, so Durant's over to respond and says to all you Nuggets fans nobody gives a F who your limbs believe is the best player in the league players got major respect for Jokic we don't worship him like y'all but we don't, we don't worship him we don't worship him like y'all do but most are in awe of his brilliance trolling you cornballs for rooting against us is a part of the game deal with it <laughs> Look, you gotta love you gotta love Durant, man. You know, um, so 
So here's my question. I don't know what the question question is. Do you believe there were several Americans that were rooting against America because of Jokic? This is a perfect question. How many people in America wanted Serbia to win based on them liking Jokic and maybe not being a fan of Team USA? Because I do believe that there is definitely a feeling of Europe against USA in America and the whole thing of who is the face of the NBA. And people now believe that Jokic might arguably be the face of the NBA and the future face of the NBA could be Luka Doncic. So maybe Durant is saying that like, oh, no, no, there are people, there are Americans, pe our people who are actually rooting against us and actually wanted Serbia to win based on their love for Jokic and wanted Yo wanting Jokic to be the face of the NBA. And there could be a little bit of a racial undertone there, but I'm not going to go there, but there's a bit of a racial undertone there. Um... I don't, I don't know how much of that is true. I would like to believe that most Americans were written for Team USA and maybe a small minority were like, yeah, I'll team, if Team USA win, cool. If Serbia win, cool. So I think this is mainly for Nuggets fans. So the question is, how many Nuggets fans were rooting for Team USA? How many Nuggets fans were rooting for Serbia because of Jokic? Um, but we continue, man. Um, Learn a lot about US sports court today. A lot of flexing for only just beating a nation of 6.6 .6 million in a sport they invented, acting like Jokic fans are committing treason. We here would never do this to a small Pacific nation in rugby league. We embrace the competition. And this was, and this is what I, what I did like my previous video. America, the only way America would win this is if they destroyed Serbia. They clowned them, destroyed them, start doing like Harlem Globetrotting stuff. By winning close, yeah, they won technically, but really Serbia sort of won, if you get what I'm saying. Because the notion is America, this shouldn't even be a contest. It shouldn't even be a contest. So for so if you see America flexing because they won, guys like, wait, you're flexed because you won a close game against freaking Serbia? It's Serbia. They have one world-class player, one. You have several. <laughs> Several. So that is so, so people's, the reason why for Durant, he has to understand where for people always root for the underdog. I will always root for the little guy. Team USA, you can't be the under, underdog or the, or the little guy. You are the team who should steamroll. As, the, as in the earlier tweets, this is arguably the most talented team we've seen ever in history. Next to the Brazil 1970 team, all the 92 Olympic team. So, yeah, Duran. Let's talk about the fan culture that's been created recently. A lot of huge egos, skip it, this, who believe they're the reason for the advancement of a sport. A lot of idol worship, a lot of hate and division based off wins and losses. A lot of disrespect to the work being put in by these incredible athletes, mostly by people who don't know what it takes to be good at anything besides talking. Go do something and get out of the way. This is this is a shot at Skip Bayless. This is a shot at Skip Bayless. I think for Durant, you have to accept the world you live in. This is the world I live in. Bro, I'm in a similar space. All I do is talk about full football. I've never played at a high level. I will never play at a high level. And I could not do an eighth of what these footballers do. But I spend, my job is I spend most of the time calling guys bricks, fruit sellers, and useless guys that don't deserve to play. But I have every right to say that. And people want to view that. And people want to view a Skip Bayless. They want to view a Stephen A. Smith. They want to view um, a First Things First. They, they want to view the, these people. So the fact that these people have viewers and people tune in is what it is. And everyone will always have opinions. And my thing for Joanne is you just ig ignore them. <laughs> That's the whole point. Like, you can't say people can't have opinions, whatever those opinions are. So for an athlete, just ignore them. But if you can't ignore them and you're led by them, that's your issue. What you can't do is say, us untalented people who cannot do an eighth of what you athletes can do are not allowed to say anything. That's ridiculous. No, we can say whatever the heck we want. We can call you trash, a bomb, useless. All you've got to do is ignore us.
Trust me, all you, you don't have listened to. All you have to do is just say, okay, you you just sit in your chair all day doing nothing. You can't do half of what I do. Boom, ignore us. But the fact that you engage encourages us to go even further. So um, the exact thing he's talking about has existed since this is the written response. Since the inception of the NBA, you think people weren't worshipping MJ or Bed and being divisive then? I used to be that guy, but it only seems like it's a problem now. Guys like Yanis and Jokic are getting the same treatments. You see, he's right. If social media existed in the 80s or the 90s, the exact same thing would ha happen. The issue is social media was not back then. If social media existed, there would be MJ guys and Magic guys. There would be and there would be um, Kobe guys and LeBron guys, because I think they sort of overlapped, or Kobe guys and Iverson guys, you know? So, peop so people will all, we are tribalistic by nature. That is just human nature. It is human nature to be tribalistic of, this is my favorite player, this is my favorite player, this is why my player is better than you. And my whole duty is to tear down that player. Look at the whole Messi-Ronaldo thing. <laughs> that that has happened. Tribalism in sports is something that will always and has always existed. The reason why we didn't know about it back then is because of no social media. If there was social media in the 80s or the 90s, people would have views. 100%. People would have views. Um, and this is okay that I think... This, that's what y'all do, y'all clowns. Use players to push these corny agendas y'all got. This is a brotherhood fam, you're not, you are not a part of. It's, so this, that's a brotherhood fam, you're not a part of. That's you are not a part of. It's a problem now because social media got you clowns walking around with your chest out like you mean something. You don't, your texts don't matter. 100%, no joints. you're right. Our texts don't matter. But Durant, you're not living in reality. Agendas is is is, is life. <laughs> life is all about agendas. It's all about agendas and narratives. If you if you sit down five six people and start talking about basketball, guys would say MJ is the goat. I would say LeBron is the goat. Right now, there are people that say no, Le LeBron is the goat, and guys say no, MJ is the goat. Guys will say Kobe is the goat, and we'll argue, and we will use agendas to push forth why we believe this guy's the goat. It's human nature. It's human nature. And everybody, and I think for, see, what Durant has to realize is you're not going to change how us fans debate and how us fans have agendas. We will always have agendas. We always have. Bro, my agenda is Steph Curry is overrated. And people attack me for it. Yeah, but I believe no, Steph Curry is overrated. He's not... He's not a top five player of all time. He's the greatest shooter of all time. He's not the greatest basketball player of all time. He's not a top five player of all time. Might not even be top 10. But that's my agenda. <laughs> and when I see people say he is, I will say, no, he's not because of blah, blah, blah. But that's just what we do as fans. It's just what we do. It's what we always will, will, will freaking do. So for Durant, you now say, and for, and for Jerry, you understand that? And this is his issue. You have to create a separation. 100% within those players, they don't care about this crap that we, that we think. Most of these players think that we're corny. 100%. There's a reason why Stephen A. Spin has never had an interview with LeBron because of that and why LeBron probably would punch Skip Bellis in, in the face. But Durant, by engaging, that's the issue because it now shows that it's, it bothers you. For most NBA players, they don't even know that we exist. <laughs> they couldn't give a demo about us. But for Durant, the fact that you are online and engaging, it's only gonna be problematic because the more you engage, the more we're gonna triple down. And hence, it brings us to the main point here. You see, Durant will never live this down. Durant is one of the most talented basketball players ever. His height, his skill, his ISO ability, he is one of the most talented basketball players that has ever lived. But when he joined the Warriors, it became a meme. It became a meme of ring chasing. And 
Durant, who is already a sensitive individual, it's people have so held that stigma against me of like you ring chased, you could have stayed with the Thunder and built something with Westbrook, built something with Harden, and actually won with those guys. Instead, you just went onto a team that was already winning just to get, make them win more. Durant and Durant has always held that against fans, which is why Durant will have this forever war against fans because fans will never allow him, will not allow him to live this down. That bro, you ring chased. Someone as talented as you going to a team that was already that talented, bro. Which is why people say, no, those rings are fake. They're not real. And Durant, that has always irked him. That has always been something that has, has always bothered him and will always bother him. And I do believe that that, I feel, what is the genesis of his war against us fans. And him saying, no, no, you guys are cornballs. You push agendas. You push guys against each other. It is what it is. But again, this is why, see, this is my advice for Durant. And he wouldn't listen. Put down that phone. Don't engage. The more you engage with us, the worse it's going to get. <laughs> Trust me, we're not going to change as fans. We are going to continue to say that, yeah, you're ring chased. Those rings are not real. That, that team was OPP. That team was overpowered. That was a cheat team. What? Durant, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry? That's stupid. That is that, that team was freaking stupid. <laughs> so, like, what the hell was LeBron supposed to do against that freaking team? So, yeah, we're always going to say that. So, And you're not going to change our, our viewpoint. So my advice to Durant is don't engage with us, fans. Don't try and change our minds because we'll always have these, our, our agendas. And I think that he... So that is my, my advice for him is there are especially him doing this, there are fans, they're not going to triple down and say, no, Jokic is better than you. And they're going to quadruple down and say, you know what? That win doesn't count. It took you, LeBron, and Corey, three of you to take down one man. <laughs> so it's almost as if Jokic is Thanos. So it took three of you superstars to take down one solitary superstar and his Serbian um, amigos. Now, nah, the window doesn't count. And for me, I'm sorry, like, I'm not repping that US win. And I think that is the issue of being such a super team. That when you're such a super team and you only just beat a team that only has six million and one superstar, we're not going to rep you. We're going to have feels, and that's where that um, tweet comes from. Because is this being unpatriotic tweeting this? No. You know, you can do two things at once. You can be like, hey, I'm happy that America won, but wow, Serbia, kudos. You can do two things at once. So my thing for Durant is, why are you assuming Swipper isn't happy that America won? That, he's ha that he can, he's doing two things. He's happy America won, but he's also giving credits to Jokic and Serbia. He can do two, two things. Because my thing is that, if see, if I was American, Okay, this is perfect. Let's say I was American. I'm not tweeting out, yes, America won. No, I'm not. Based on my personality and how I am, I'm a guy of gid, dod, doy, degree of difficulty, degree of impossibility. So if I was American, I'm not tweeting out, yes, America, man, we showed us how we're amazing. If I was American, I would tweet this out. This is what I'll tweet out. I'll be like, wow, Serbia, that's amazing. Because for us, we should destroy you. You are one superstar. We have three, four, five superstars. We should destroy the fact that you and your team took us to the wire. I'm not going to tweet out, yes, America, we got, we got the W. I'm going to tweet out that Serbia did absolutely amazing and they should be proud. They should be proud. And I think that is how Durant should view this, that this is not being un-American. This is just being a lover of sports and appreciating the efforts that a huge underdog put in. 